In this video, I will show you how to automate your Synapse pipelines using metadata SQL tables. This will allow you to handle large numbers of entities, make your pipelines more flexible and easier to maintain. All of this in just few easy steps. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, it's Mariusz here with Cloud Data Lab. In this video, we've built on top of previous tutorial on parameterizing pipelines, focusing on creating metadata table that dynamically feeds values to the pipeline parameters. This approach is extremely useful when handling large volumes of entities. By storing the information in the metadata table, we can easily iterate that table and execute the pipeline with different parameters for each of the rows. It is a flexible solution that allows for easy expansion by adding extra columns or tables to the model. For this tutorial, we keep things simple. However, you can build your solution as flexible as you like. Before we begin, to follow along with this tutorial, you will need Azure Synapse pipelines with parameters. If you haven't got one, don't worry, I will include the link in the description below to our previous video. You will also need Azure SQL database to store our metadata tables. And again, if you haven't got one, I will include the link to the documentation so you can build one yourself. And finally, you will need a link service in your Synapse workspace connecting to that SQL database. And for that, if needed, you can find the link in the description below to one of my videos where I explain how to create that. With that said, let's head over to my laptop to get started. Here we are in Synapse Studio. Let's start by looking at the pipeline we're going to build in this tutorial. As you can see, this pipeline has two activities. Lookup activity is used to retrieve the content of the SQL metadata table where we will store the pipeline's parameter values. And for each activity, that iterates through the results of the lookup activity and executes another pipeline for each row. And is executed using execute pipeline activity. And of course, we will dive into more details later when we build our pipeline. As you might remember in our previous video, we use this pipeline to copy two files, DBO employees and DBO orders, from the source folder into sync folder in our primary data lake. For today's scenario, we'll use the same two files. So let's make sure both files are in source folder. And the sync folder is empty. Now that we have good overview of what we're going to create, let's navigate to the query editor of our Azure SQL metadata database. Here, I'm going to authenticate and paste in a script to create and populate my metadata table that I prepared earlier. And don't worry, I will include link to the GitHub repository where you will be able to find both pipeline file and the SQL script necessary to build this solution. Now, the metadata table we're creating has four columns. ID, that is just an identity column. Metadata control ID, used to isolate groups or batches of rows. Enabled, which allows as to enable or disable record for the pipeline processing and pipeline parameters where we will store all the pipeline parameters as a JSON string. Sure, you could create a column for each of your parameters, but this would mean that if you want to use this table for another pipeline, you would have to keep adding columns to accommodate parameters unique to those individual pipelines. At some point, you might find that the maintenance of that table is growing bigger and bigger. 
storing all the parameters as JSON string gives you more flexibility. Next, we insert the rows into metadata table, where for metadata control ID, we insert one. For enabled, we insert one as well, that equals two, true. And for the pipeline parameters, we insert the JSON string with values that correlate with the pipeline parameters. File system for both source and sync. File path, again for both source and sync, as well as file name. Notice that the only distinct values are for the file name parameter where we have DBO employees and DBO orders. Now, let's run the script and see the results. As our table is ready, let's head back to Azure Synapse Studio to create the pipeline. Here, Let's add new pipeline and give it a name. Now let's search for a lookup activity and drag it to the canvas. Let's give it a name as well. Now let's move into the settings properties and select the data set connected to our SQL metadata database. Since we want to iterate through the results of the query, we need to make sure that the first row only option is deselected. Now let's select the query and go to get a script. And go back to paste in the SQL script into the query window. Notice that in the where close, we limit the result to metadata control ID equals one and enabled equals one as well for the reasons explained earlier. At this stage, we can debug the pipeline to verify the output. Once the run has completed successfully, we can investigate the output property. Here we can see the count of rows returned from our SQL query and the actual value that is stored as a JSON array containing query results where each element is a row of a table stored as JSON object. Now let's find for each activity and drag it to the canvas so we can iterate through the output value. Now let's give it a name and we need to relate it to the lookup activity on success. In the settings property, under items, click on add dynamic content. Here under activity output, we're going to find the name of our lookup activity. In my case, it will be lookup metadata entities. And as you can see, there are a few options to select from. But the one we're after is the one ending with a value array. This will access the output value of lookup activity we investigated earlier. Therefore, each activity will iterate through each element of the array, meaning each row in our SQL table, and perform some other activities. In our case, this activity is the execution of another pipeline, namely the one we created in our previous video. To add the pipeline, click on edit to step inside for each activity. Here, we can drag the pipeline we want to execute 
click on settings properties where you will see pipeline we want to invoke as well as the parameters of that pipeline. Now, as you can see, these are aligned with the JSON strings stored in the pipeline parameters column of our metadata table. Now, all that's left to do is to pass the values from for each iterator into those parameters as dynamic content. Let's start with input's file system. From for each iterator, select current item. This will create a reference to the current item in the array. From there, we need to access the pipeline parameters column. Now, this column is stored as JSON string with all the parameters. To access them, we need to convert this string to JSON. And now we can access the parameter value itself. Now let's repeat the process for all remaining parameters. Once you added the remaining parts, you can commit the changes so that all the hard work is not lost. And it looks like we have done everything we need. So let's exit the for each activity by clicking here on our pipeline. And we can click debug to test the pipeline. As you can see, we have notification pop out informing us that for debugging, for each will be sequential. However, for trigger runs, for each loop will use defined batch count or parallel runs. This is because we use execute pipeline activity inside for each. So nothing to worry about. Looks like the run was successful. And as you can see, we have the lookup and for each activities executed, as well as execute pipeline run for each of the rows in the metadata table. Now let's have a quick look in the data lake folder to see if the files are there. And as expected, both files are present. So, as you've seen, creating metadata-driven pipelines in Azure Synapse is fairly easy. This solution can easily be scaled by adding extra entities as rows into your metadata table. And it can be applied to any data source supported by Azure Synapse pipelines. In this tutorial, we kept things simple. However, you can build your solution as flexible as you like by adding extra columns or tables to your model. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you have any comments or feedback, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.